Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're going to talk about how to run a business. There's a lot of different ways. You probably know some of them. You may not know some of them, but here's some good ideas for you. Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Welcome to the show. If it's your first time, check this out. Thanks for hanging out. We got tons of episodes. Go back and listen. We got like 60 plus hours of content. Shows come out every single Friday, so go watch that. It is on YouTube and anywhere podcasts are available. Uh, and uh, for all you veterans, all you cool kids, you elite part of the nation, the people who thumbs up every video, who comment, and most importantly, buy your supplies through me, what is going on? It is because of you that I get to drink name brand K-Cups, huh? Yeah, there you go. No, but if you want to buy your supplies through me, uh, here's my number. Uh, save it, write it down, whatever. 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. So you can call me, text me, whatever you want. And uh, I would love nothing more than to be your rep. So please, please do um, let me know whatever I can do to help you out. Uh, this is what I do. For a living, I'm a sales rep. So uh, letting me put orders in doesn't cost you anything extra. And it's literally a high five. It's the most awesome, epic, and amazing thing you could possibly do. So do that. Text me. A lot of people, too, they just put everything in their cart. Text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Put my order in. Uh, and at the end of the show, I'm going to give you a coupon, a code, not a coupon. What am I talking about? A code for 5% off and free shipping. So uh, stay tuned for that. But anyway, back to everything. I just want to give a couple quick shout outs. First off, I want to say what's up to MacGyver Brian, coolest name on uh, YouTube. Uh, what's up to you? Hugo Vargas, of course. What's going on, man? I think Hugo, I think you're one of the OGs. I think you're like, you've been watching for quite a long time. So what's up, man? And Linda Baker, what's going on? Uh, go ahead, comment on YouTube. Then I get more names to uh, say what's up to. And uh, anyway, there you go. 15 seconds of fame for no nothing. It's just to be talked about. But like I said, today we're going to be talking about learning to run a business. Now, this is a weird topic because there's a lot of stuff out there that people focus on. And I think sometimes we lose sight of the fundamentals. Here's the thing. This is what I've said a lot of times, a bunch of times about business in general. Whatever business you're in, which we just happen to clean windows, pressure washing, roof cleaning, maybe you're janitorial, the lawn care. But no matter what business you're in, running the business is its own challenge. There's a lot to running a business. And sometimes people get more fixated on, I got to have the newest gear. I got to have the, you know, what's the technique to do this? How do I do this? How do I look like? But you forget the fact that you're running a business. And there's a big difference between uh, working for someone or yourself and running the business. Here's a kind of an interesting thing. Think about a restaurant in your town that's gone out, uh, gone under, and then all of a sudden reopened under new management. A lot of times those don't succeed. They fail out. And the reason is, is because a lot of the times you have a restaurant, it's doing great. Management decides we're done. We're not going to be doing this. We're going in another market. We're doing whatever. Maybe they're retiring. And then the cooking, wait staff, whoever buys the business. And it's great. They say, well, we know this thing. We know it in and out. We put in 50 hours a week here. Okay. Okay. That's great. A lot of times they fail because they know some of it, but they don't actually know the running of a business part. And that's hard. It's not something that everybody is really born with, but there's a lot of resources out there. But there's a lot of building a business, running a business, succeeding a business that people just don't think about. And that's why you see a lot of failures kind of in that restaurant relaunch thing, the uh, under new management. It's because the running of a business is different. And when I say that there's a difference between working for your business and running your business or working for and owning, there is. Because here's the thing. I always say that your employees don't care about you. 
Uh, they're there for a check, and if you weren't signing a check, they wouldn't be there. Everybody goes, no. <laughs> My employees love me. Oh, you're probably a great place to work, right? You're, you're probably uh, the best job they've maybe had. I know I've prided myself in being like the best work environment. Like I would have died to work for me. But the real fact of the matter is they're still there because you signed the check. You're in your business because it's your business. Sometimes you don't get a check and you're still there, right? So there's a big difference. There's a big difference. Uh, people don't necessarily care about your business like you do either because if you stopped writing their check or said, hey man, sorry, you're, you're fired, I gotta let you go. They go, oh, that sucks, boo hoo. And then they go find another job. You lose everything you've invested in the company. So being business savvy and running a successful business, not just good numbers, but like a healthy business, that's super, super valuable. And a lot of us just kind of forget about it because we're too worried about where is the next uh, advertisement coming from or where's my next customer? I got to get these estimates done. I got to get this work done before it freezes. Well, that's what it is now. By the way, recording this is December 2019. So yeah, it's cold. It's getting there. It's getting there. I don't want to say the W word, but we're close to it. But it's a bad word. Bad word in uh, service industry. But here's the big differences. Again, the first thing that I always tell people to do, which you don't necessarily think about, is learning sales. I could show you, I have a bookcase here with one, two, three, uh, basically three shelves of sales books. Some of them are like in the business side of it, but most of it's sales. And here's the thing. Sales is just explaining your service because somebody already has it in their brain, right? Salesmen usually can help you understand a product. A bad salesman pushes it, right? Everybody knows the, the, the bad term salesman. I'm a salesman. And I really, really try to not ever push people into what that they, they don't need or don't want. Like, I really, really want to just put all the information out there. You are so smart, you're going to make the decision on your own. You don't need me to tell you which way to go. But I can tell you the information. And that's what sales is. Sales is explaining yourself and telling them why you are awesome, why your company is amazing, why they should choose you, and then they make the decision. But that's sales. When you are in a small business and you are your own business itself, right? Sales are there, okay, you exist because of sales. If you don't sell, if you don't close somebody to book with you, you're not in business. And a lot of people just kind of let that go. They go, well, I'm not a salesman. People call me and I'm like, yeah. They were like, I want to book an appointment. Okay, great. How much up sales did you do? How many people did they call for an estimate that didn't book with you? How many people called you and then called somebody else because maybe they were cheaper? How many people called you, said, what's your price? You told them, they went, whoa, that's way higher than my last guy. I'm going to go with him. You didn't do your sales. You didn't sell. You didn't tell them why. They just looked at the price. They just looked at the price. Again, I'm going to give this, I've given this a hundred times, but here's the thing. If I'm going to sell you something, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'm going to sell it to you for either a dollar, a hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars. Which one would you pay? Well, right now with the information you have, the only thing you can focus on is money. You're going to pay the cheapest, always, right? What if I said then it's a brand new Ferrari? Well, now you know what it is. You're going to buy two of them at $1,000, right? That's where people get stuck on the price. They say, I got to be the lowest one. Man, I got these guys in my area. These guys in my area, man, they're, they're half the price of me. I can't compete. I got to drop my price. Wrong. Wrong. Are you going to close 100%? No, you shouldn't be closing 100% anyway. You're doing it wrong. They're not closing 100% because people are like, yeah, you're going to charge me 50 bucks. I'm pretty sure that's too low right? I've lost big jobs, by the way, that I've messed up the bid and asked them why they didn't choose me. You know, I was asked that quite, okay, if, if you don't mind me asking so I can learn for the next time, why don't you choose us? Your bid was way too low. There's no way you could give us a service that we were requesting with a bid that low. I've been told that on commercial projects. I was told one time, this is way early on. This is a true, 100% true story. We had them, I've, I've had them basically the entire time. I went to this property manager and it was, I knew somebody who had worked there and they just happened to be looking for a window cleaner. And I went there to the commercial project. I put the bid together, gave it to him. It was my first 
real commercial bid. I gave it to him and he went, no. He said, um, you can double that price and I'll go with you. And I'm like, uh, you mean cut it in half? I, I don't know if I know. He said, no, double it. He's you're you're less than half of what it should be. He's like, here's where you should be in the price. And then every year we'll go up from there. And I'm like, oh, so I bid him. He told me double it and I'll get the job. He wasn't going to hire me at such a low price. So price is not something. Price is only existent when price is the only thing they're focused on. There will always be a McDonald's cheeseburger and a steakhouse cheeseburger. So knowing how to sell somebody while you're more expensive is valuable. Letting somebody know or selling them on the fact that you're worth that money or that there's only one you or there's only one of your company, then they're not going to choose anybody else because you're the only option. Michael Geller, uh, who is a window cleaner and has been on the show, he said something that stuck with me and he said, uh, somebody told him that be Michael Geller because there's only one Michael Geller and price doesn't matter because if they want Michael Geller, they pay what you ask. And that's really the thing. If, telling somebody what your company is, why you're the best, gets you the work. That's sales. Sales is that. Sales is upselling. Why does somebody need to add a house wash? Why does somebody need to get their windows cleaned when they're doing a house wash? Or why do they need to have the concrete clean? How about also doing the, you know, frame sills and track upgrade or something like that? That's sales. Sales is very, very important. If you know how to clean, awesome. You work for yourself. If you know how to take appointments, awesome. You are a uh, secretary and you could just take those information that anybody else, you just paid somebody $5 and or $5, $10 an hour for, could sit in a chair, answer the phone and take appointments. You're working for yourself. Learn to sell. Learn to sell and you will increase your, your profits. You'll help a lot more people. People are hiring you because it's a luxury. They want their windows clean. Well, what if also now your siding looks amazing? What if I got your roof, your siding, and your concrete plus your windows all looking awesome? They're, I'm helping those people. They wanted that, right? So that's sales. Sales is super, super important. And I never, ever can kind of tell people enough about sales because it's one of those things that everybody seems to forget. Go get sales book. Uh, Grant Cardone does a good one on um, uh, objections. Now, Grant Cardone is a hard salesman, so I don't follow everything by any means. But you could take pieces of it. And I don't follow anything. I mean, I've read probably 20, 30 books on sales maybe in the past two years, we'll say. And I've never found one that I'm like, everything in this book is absolutely correct. But there's a lot of good information and it helps you kind of understand things. I watch furniture sales on YouTube. Guys that talk about that because they're like, okay, so, you know, this is this is how we go about it. This is how we merge. This is how a sale goes into the next thing in an upsell. Super valuable. Super valuable. But anyway, learn sales. Don't be scared of it. Even if you hate sales, don't be scared of it. Learn it and you won't be scared of it. Uh, the next big one that people always forget is learning money management. Now, everybody goes, well, this is stupid, fast forward, money management. Yeah, I got money. You got money in the busy season. But how much of a percentage of your money is going back into your advertising? How much, How what percentage of money is going to your, your pay, your labor costs? What's your actual overhead? How much are all your vehicles, insurance, fuel? How much does it cost? to get those vehicles on the road. How much do you need to make every single day to keep the doors open? Now, that changes. If you get that money, great, but now somebody's gotta do that work. So now every hour somebody works, you're increasing the amount of money that you have to make to pay for them. It's interesting stuff, don't guess. You have to know money management is super, super valuable and I learned the hard, hard way. This is, man, Ah, 10 years ago, I got in a bind where my accountant was like, wow, you did really well. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you owe so much money in taxes. I'm like, hmm, come again right now? I have to owe. And I got myself this winter. I had nothing. Like, I just didn't have the know-how to have the money management. I had to learn very, very fast. And uh, when I sold my company, the guy I went in after about a week, 
just to say what's up. I mean, I knew him. He's my operations guy forever. I just want to see how things going. Went down there. And uh, he's like, hey, yeah, yeah, everything's going good. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking. He goes, yeah, I'm looking at this new motorcycle, man. This thing is awesome. I said, well, what do you mean motorcycle, dude? You got to. You just bought a business, man. It's fall. Winter's coming. He's like, yeah, but we're killing it. I said, yes, you're killing it right now. But you understand that you have to build up to have. And that's a big part that people don't understand either. That's where money kills a lot of businesses. You can go and just make more money. But what if you have frivolous stuff? What if you're not checking all of your uh, payments? What if your insurance every year, you're not going over premiums or you're you're not uh, double checking what's coming out? Maybe you're not uh, reconciling your account every month. Knowing these, putting them into spreadsheets, doing all of that is super, 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 super valuable. That's why I love QuickBooks. QuickBooks is quick and easy. This is not a commercial for QuickBooks. And it's not the greatest kind of program out there, probably. But I love it because I can click one button and I got all the reports. I can find out how much money I actually made, how much money I profited, how much money I have on hand, how much credit is available, how much blah, blah. I can figure out everything with the click of a mouse. And that is more valuable than anything because I can see my company. When you look at other somebody else's company, everybody's had that buddy or somebody that they've heard of, all of a sudden they're not in business anymore. You're like, what the heck? They were doing so good. No, they weren't. Their outside was doing so good, right? They, they showed you they were doing so good or they thought they were doing so good. But then when things really happened, it's, they were not really doing that. Everybody fights on the internet. They say, well, I'm a, oh man, I, I make a hundred bucks an hour. Okay, how much, what's your net? Ah, probably 75, really? You're guessing. You have no idea what it costs to be. I got some Dawn dish soap. How'd you get to the job? Or do you have in, insurance on the company, your business? Do you have storage? Do you have, uh, what's your cost of how many supplies you need? What's the cost to every window? How much does it cost in rubber, right? Because you're gonna have to get new rubbers after a day or two or whatever you're doing. What is all those costs? What does your actual day cost? It's surprising. My actual day cost was $176 and change that I needed to make every single day just to stay open. No labor costs because labor cost changes that number. My number just of what I need to have in profits that day is 176 bucks a day, every single day of the week. That's crazy. That's crazy when you don't know those costs. Now you're like, oh, that's, that's not bad. Yeah. But what happens on a rain day? You just paid $176 and made no money, no work. What about middle of winter when you don't have work for a few days? Maybe you got a cold snap. I'm in Wisconsin where, you know, you got uh, a week of temperatures that are negative 20 plus. You can't work for a week. Now that $176, you're still paying every single day. Like these are super, super valuable. and It helps you understand the business. Think about a Coca-Cola or a McDonald's or something. There's a guy or a girl whose entire job is just to understand what their money situation is. There's probably departments, departments. You know, this kind of stuff is very, very important. You have to understand that your business, even if it's small, is structured and should be run like it's a big business. Now, it's smaller things. One person, just you could figure out the money side of it because it's a lot easier to do. With QuickBooks, it's very easy. But that basically, you know, helps you understand where your company is, where, where your health is. So money is very, very important. Again, read a book on it. Uh, be debt free in your company if you want. Uh, take on commercial debt if you know where your assets come in from. Understand your percentage of yield to marketing. Know that, okay, I'm going to put back 3% of every dollar I make into marketing. Okay, well then where's your marketing calendar? Where's your everything to make sure that's happening? That's big. Another one is learning about your equipment, learning about what's new out there and why the equipment's better. Now, we talked earlier about that people are more worried about equipment because, ah, I saw Steve-O. He's using uh, that new fancy thingamajig. Got to have one of those. No, 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 no. You can do that. That's fine. I'm a huge proponent of always having the coolest, best equipment because it's fun. But there is equipment out there that saves you time. What if a pole warning? But a water-fed pole, I can run circle. Don't tell me you can be faster than me. Anything two stories and above, and I got a water-fed pole, what are you talking about? You're, you're just naive. But that can speed up. I can do things twice as fast as you, if not faster. 
I can do twice as fast than I can with a ladder. That helps my efficiency. That makes me for a stronger company. That's understanding equipment. Understanding, say, an accelerator by Mormon. If I'm doing route work, I can fan with that and it speeds me up. The edges, I don't have to do as much detailing. Huck towels over uh, terry towels because terry towels, I'm always trying to get the lint off, but huck towels are lint-free and they suck up water. Like That's speed. That, that's efficiency. You got to learn that too. So knowing about equipment, knowing what's out there, not just because it's new, but what can it do for you is big. And finding out what's hype and what's not because there's a lot of stuff out there that people think is amazing or they've heard is amazing, but yet it doesn't really make you better or faster. Better and faster means you make more money. If I got a job and I do it in two hours or I do it in one hour, if I got it done in an hour, I'm making twice the amount of money than if I did it twice or in two hours. So super, super valuable to understand what makes you faster. And another one is learning about HR. If you have employees, you have to know the legal ramifications for having employees. If you ever want to screw yourself, mess up an employee's something, have a job site error, have a uh, employee decide that you didn't treat them fairly, you, your world will be rocked. Labor laws, they're, they're very, 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 very for the worker, not for the company. So, and that's cool. Like, I'm not saying that as a bad thing, but the big thing is, is that if you're not ready or you're not doing things by the book, or you're like, ah, oh, well, a guy comes in on Saturdays and I pay him cash. Okay, so now you've not filed that with the government. They've not filed that with the government. So they're not paying taxes and you're not paying taxes on that. If that employee ever decides they want to screw you, pardon the French, they will do that and the government will be happy to take lots and lots of money and penalty and fees and late fees and potentially audit you for everything else. Like it's, it can be very, very bad. So hiring or knowing HR is very, very important. There's a lot of places that even require to have posters up. Uh, if you have employees over a certain number, you know, having bathrooms, the amount of bathrooms, the type of bath, there's so much that goes in to having employees you need to know. Not just having them and knowing that they do work. That part is the easy part. There's a lot of things that go with employees. And that brings me to the next point. Uh, delegating a lot of your duties. Delegating, okay. When you first start off, you want to do everything yourself. Every hat is yours. Why? Because you have more time than money. But slowly, time and money start to change. Right? And all of a sudden, you got more money but you don't have a free minute of your day. It's time to delegate. You can't run a business by doing everything. The guy who, uh, the CEO of Coca-Cola doesn't make the soda. He doesn't bottle it, he doesn't deliver it. He delegates. There's lots and lots of different things. So as you're getting larger, you have to understand that delegation, that's like taking tasks and handing them to somebody else is huge. Now it doesn't mean you have to have a full employee for things, but an office staff, awesome. Awesome. There's so many things that you're doing that are just, that can be done by a $10 an hour person, right? A ton of stuff. It's super valuable. Taking on VAs for a lot of that. Uh, virtual assistants. Look into that. That's huge. But what I'm talking about mainly is the payroll we just talked about. I hate payroll and I don't want to know anything specific and I don't want to get in trouble. So guess what? I hire a payroll service to run my employees through. My employees are employees of the payroll service technically. So they have to deal with everything that's legality and it's their job to know the specifics with employees in my state, county, city, all that. I don't have to worry about that. When I get audited by the state, uh, we'd like to audit you for all your records on your employees. I don't have employees. I run temps. You got to call that company. Oh, great. Okay. They do that. I don't have to do that. If there's a change that needs to be made or something specific that has to happen employee-wise, they tell me that. That's where that is super, super valuable. And by the way, whenever I talk about this, people always go, uh, express payroll services one. Um, I found somebody said that they don't do that anymore, um, but uh, there's local guys that do. Running your employees through them is just huge, huge. It takes such a burden. I was paying 38% uh, on top of my employees. And that 38%, was their uh, taxes, it was their vacation pay, it was their um, sick pay, holiday pay, uh, and all their benefits, uh, medical, dental, vision, term life, 
term disability, I think. All of that was all under that 38%. And workers' comp. Workers' comp rates are almost that by themselves. This is huge. This is huge. You want to save money. That's the way to do it. But it takes a little bit of labor to kind of find that in the beginning. Once you run all your employees through there, it's huge. Go back and watch um, an episode I've done on employment. Um, employees, maybe. And it'll talk all about it. I won't get into it again. But another one's an accountant. Okay, so you have QuickBooks. Awesome. You can see everything at a, at a, at a, at a button's click. But the accountant is going to tell you your side of it. How much are you supposed to be putting away every month? How much are you supposed to be paying the government so you don't get screwed in the end of the year? How much money are you supposed to be uh, uh, putting through in full withholdings or FICA or uh, Medicare? Right? How much are you supposed to be doing on all that? And then when it does come down to it, how do you structure yourself to be able to pay less in taxes? Because if you're just a sole proprietor and you're running that out, you're going to eventually owe a lot of money. And it's going to suck. So you have to make sure that you see all of that and, and accountants do that. An accountant's job is to then know all the tax codes. Tell me how I can save money. Tell me how I can structure this. Very, very important to have an accountant. Make sure you have one. Now, yes, it costs you a couple bucks, but it saves you money. Understand that you're going to be paying thousands and thousands, if not tens and tens of thousands of dollars in taxes a year. If you have to pay some guy $400, $500, $1,000 a year to cut your liability in half or 25%, that's huge. That's worth it. It's worth it. And they know what you don't know. That's delegation. Letting somebody do something you don't need to know about takes another hat, takes another thing off your head. Just like answering services. If you haven't heard of an answering service, look into those. It is a phone room somewhere and they basically answer your call as you. Uh, I'd like to make an appointment or a set up a bid or a, oh great, well, let me get all your information and we'll get, and then they pass that information through. So not only do they do a lot of it, if they want to get booked, they can book they can do all that stuff. They have questions. All that gets answered and then maybe a tenth of the calls actually get through to you. You're saving that. You're delegating that. That is huge. Imagine if you didn't have to answer the call like, would you like to be on the first page of Google? How many times do you hate that? Services like that free up your time. It's super, super cheap to have somebody do that. A, a phone service, um, answering service to do that. And it saves the time for you to go make real money. Or to do other things. Right? Think about it. If your time is worth, say, $50 an hour, isn't it worth it then you could free up a couple hours a day in all this delegation? That means $50 every hour is what you're you're, you're making back. Super, super valuable. Um, and uh, the one of the biggest, biggest things I think, uh, and this would be if this was the top 10, this would be my number one, would be schedule everything. I'm talking about scheduling your marketing. I'm talking about scheduling your goals. I'm talking about uh, scheduling your appointments and your bids and your jobs and you're putting it all out there. If you have a plan or an idea of where you want it to go and you don't have it written down, it's just a dream and you'll forget it. You have to write this down. You have to plan it. I'm talking about a marketing calendar. How many of you do not have a marketing calendar? How many of you are just going to like, ah, oh, I thought about it. I'm going to throw You're missing out on the building, the healthiness of your company, the, the building the structure, the building the, the jobs, getting all the work. If you're slow, it's because you didn't do the advertising when you're supposed to. Marketing calendars keep you accountable. Scheduling uh, in goals. You have to do weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly goals to be able to make those goals actually happen. Again, if you have goals and it's not written down, it's a dream. Dreams you lose, right? You have to understand, well, what do I need to do every week? Okay, I want to do a million dollars next year or I want to do $50,000 next year. How do I get there? What do I have to do every day? What do I have to do every week? What do I have to do every quarter, month, year, whatever, right? February is going to be slower than May, right? So now you have to adjust everything. But calculating it out gets you an idea of are you on target? Are you not on target? 
marketing calendar. Okay, am I gonna get these pieces out or am I not gonna get these pieces out? Well, now if I have a marketing calendar, I'm spending my uh, 3% of where I think I wanna be or 3% of last year. Now, how do I calculate that? Where is, how much money am I making to what am I spending on marketing? Is my marketing getting out? Achieving goals means that everything that you've planned for, everything you wanna do and go to will happen because you're following that. If you don't, what happens is you get busy for two, three months and you forget to do all of that for two or three months. You just kicked yourself in the shin and you're not gonna be as far as you wanna go. So knowing business is super, super valuable. And this was a super, super boring episode, I'm sorry. But I can't get uh, stressed enough that the business side of it, you could be selling widgets, picking up dog poop, you could be doing any of that stuff. And knowing business and how to run a business, you'll be successful. So don't forget to like strengthen that side of it. Anyway, like I said before, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. If you need anything window cleaner, pressure washing supplies, please do call me 862-312-2026. You can text me. I text all day, every day. The code this week is goals. If you tell me goals, um, you'll get 5% off and free shipping. So why not, right? Put your orders in, let me know. I want every order, big or small. I want to wrap. You just tell me everything's in there before you click the button, you click the text button instead and you text me. It's not a button, but you know what I'm saying. Make it happen. Again, 862-312-2026. Thank you guys for everything. Uh, genuinely appreciate all of you who are like just loyal as all could be. I love it. It makes my day, it makes my life, and I'm drinking name brand k-cups because of it man now uh, go out there and uh, learn a bunch about your business do everything you can this is your college folks do it learn it be awesome and most importantly be epic